Joining us on the podcast today, we've got Russell Resnick with Lenovo. Thanks for joining in. Uh, good afternoon uh, from sunny Raleigh. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's an odd, partially sunny day today in Cincinnati. We're used to gray, overcast, and cold this time of year, so we're always jealous of the southeast weather. Yes. So, so tell us, what do you? What's I know you as as my AMD server guy, but I'm sure that's not what's on your card. What What's your uh, role at down at Lenovo? So uh, my title is segment manager for the one and two socket rack and tower servers. So I uh, work with a, a team to uh, uh, create and um, uh, bring to market our portfolio of one and two socket rack and tower servers, which now includes both Intel and AMD. So that's the bulk of the portfolio. I know you've got other stuff. We've got an SR950 in here, for instance, which is not a one or two socket server. Right. So I have a peer who handles um, the uh, the blade servers and the four socket servers and the eight socket servers, and then uh, there's someone else who handles our new dense uh, our new uh, edge offering. Okay. Right. The we have that uh, SE350. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a neat little beast too. We right. uh, we intend to get around to that, but that is not uh, in your domain. So let's we'll keep it to your domain. I know we're really excited about the SR six thirty five. That's the single socket one U AMD server uh, based on the new Rome processors. But before we get too deep into that, Lenovo didn't, I think, is my understanding, didn't make a commercially available server on the Gen 1 Epic, the Naples uh, CPUs. Tell me about how you guys got into AMD and what the history is there, and, and then let's dive deeper into the, the new Rome boxes. Yeah, so we, um, we actually worked with some customers uh, on some Naples products. As you know, we have a very large hyperscale business. Uh, mm -hmm. We sell to seven of the 10 largest hyperscale customers in the world. So uh, some of them approached us uh, with an interest in Naples. So we actually created two Naples products uh, for, for those customers. But we didn't see Naples as really being ready for prime time or for general purpose usage. Uh, but that, that did give us a, a, a you know, an introduction to what AMD was doing and where their roadmap was going and and um, how we could uh, take advantage of their roadmap moving forward. Okay, so yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that maybe a lot of people don't know about Lenovo, and I don't want to speak for you, it's not even your group, I don't think, but I've. it's my understanding that if given a certain order volume that you guys will create, if not bespoke, some pretty customized platforms that you know, wouldn't show up in your traditional uh, Lenovo.com store. Oh uh, yeah, we certainly will. We call it the ODM plus model. Right. In that, um, you know, we own our own card manufacturing, which many of our competitors don't. Uh, we own our own factories where we integrate the systems, you know, build the systems. So we can work with a customer to create a totally custom system. Uh, and where we uh, design, assemble uh, both the motherboards, and then we assemble the chassis. And yeah, that's, the system that's pretty neat. Yeah, we can, we can, you know, we can hand you a single server, or we can roll in a, a rack full of servers that's totally configured, tested, ready to go. And that falls. You have a support program for those as well, I assume. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's let's get into Rome. So now Rome's out. You guys were at the launch uh, that I was at uh, that AMD held last year. So I mm -hmm. got to see firsthand some of the work done. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions and maybe issues with with the AMD uh, progression from Naples to Rome is not so much the fact that first gen systems that were on Naples are drop in compatible with Rome, but that there's new stuff capable in Rome, most notably from our perspective around storage P is PCIe Gen 4. Because you made a new system, you're able to take advantage of the whole stack in PCIe Gen 4 in the front and the back of the system. Maybe talk about that a little bit in terms of why you guys did what you did with the SR635 and SR655 and the importance or 
you know, perceived importance, at least from my perspective, of being able to support all those new things that AMD has to offer. Right. So we we um we realized that just taking a, a ROM CPU and dropping it in a, in a Naples design wouldn't really give the customers the full uh, value of what ROM brings to the market. So <clears throat> we decided early on that we were going to design a system that took advantage of ROM, uh, you know, in all the ways we could. So we, we, the 635 and 655, you know, are a complete gen, a complete gen four system. There's no, no gen three, uh, cape. Uh, I mean, it, it'll run at gen three speeds, but sure. every, every slot is designed to run at gen four, uh, speeds. Um, we made sure that, um, uh, the power, uh, delivery to the CPU, uh, would allow the 60, the new 64 core CPUs to run at full speed. Um, if you if you drop a Rome CPU into a Naples box, uh, the 64 core CPUs will be forced to throttle because mm-hmm. they can't get enough power off the board. So we wanted to make sure that the 64 core CPUs would run at full speed, and and I think we've demonstrated that we have a number of world records uh, for a variety of workloads on the one socket system with the 64 core CPU. I know you're also excited about, or at least in your your marketing materials as I consume them and as we think about PCIe Gen 4, that you've got non-blocking. So in the in the 635, 1U single socket server, we can get, let's see, let me remember the spec sheet. We can put 10 NVMe PCIe Gen 4 in the front. You can put four in this internal chassis on inside the system. And then two more on the back, so we can get sixteen in the one U. Is that is my count right? I, yeah, you did your homework. That's right. <laughs> and um, yeah, now th- that may not be for everybody, but it certainly no, certainly fully exploits the the full capability in the system. And for those customers who want to turn this into a say a software defined storage node, um, or a uh, a hyper converged node, um, it makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah, it's so one of the things we did, as you saw a a video on the SR635, just exploring the layout. One of the things that that we're always so impressed with in the Lenovo designs is how modular everything is. It's, uh, you know, even the M.2 sled in that was in ours, we didn't have the internal four bay unit. But that the raid card, the the backplane, it's like two tabs and lift and pull and, and yank it out. How important is that to you guys or to your customers? Because I, on one half, I think, well, most people are never going to even take the lid off of these things and will never even notice that modularity. But on the other hand, as we tinker and play with these things, as I think about like home lab guys or, or developers that want to get really into the, the, the componentry, it's really cool. How, how do you guys think about that? Well, we think about it from the customer point of view, which is, you know, Think System has a has a a, a record of uh, you know being the server with the least amount of unplanned downtime, uh, and there's some independent studies that confirm that. Uh, the only server that's better than Think System is the IBM uh, uh, Z series, you know, the mainframe. Right. And, and part of that is because uh, many of us here come from IBM System X, and we bring that philosophy with us. So. Part of the situation is, is we want to keep unplanned downtime to a minimum. So a lot of these uh, features that allow for easy removal of backplanes and other kinds of things um, come from the, the desire to um, make sure that the units are very serviceable so that if they're, if, you know, in the rare event there is an issue, it can be resolved quickly. Uh, so that's, that's why we do that for the customer. Now, the other thing we try to do to keep costs down and make sure that we meet our commitments to our customers. We want to make sure that these systems reuse a lot of parts. So if you look at the, if you look at the 635, the 655 and upcoming products, you'll see that they share a lot of backplanes and power supplies and raid cards and things like that. So we, we want to make sure that we reuse as many parts as possible to keep the number of unique parts down which allows us, you know, allows the supply chain a lot more efficiency, uh, which helps us, you know, meet our commitments to our customers in terms of delivery. I think if you look at Lenovo as a total company, um, I think it's like uh, we make something like every 19 seconds or something like that. <laughs> so we're very, we're very, 
much uh, 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 oriented towards high volume manufacturing and being very efficient at what we manufacture. So that's a lot of the reasons for that. Yeah, well, it, it, it doesn't go unnoticed once you pop the lid or have had experience with you know, many other servers. It Just the modularity is, is impressive. And just the fact that, you know, I'm getting hung up on this one thing just because I think it's so neat. But for people to understand, inside this one new server, there's a slot that's side by side where you've got a RAID card and you've got, in, in our version anyway, an M.2 SSD slot. These two trays just literally pick up out of the system decable uh i think maybe on the raid card but the uh, the m.2 is pin connected and then you can drop in a four two and a half inch drive uh nvme bay thing that rises up like um you know one of those missile launchers from 80s movies you know where the the, the thing lifts up and then you can slot in four drives and then punch it back down it's just right. really neat. Mm-hmm. We're, we think it's cool yeah and and now not a lot of customers may be interested in making that switch on the fly, but certainly, <laughs> certainly for business partners, you know, our channel partners who want to configure systems themselves for customers, it makes it a lot easier because they can they can buy a system, you know, out of the out of distribution and it's ready to go to be configured just the way the customer wants. Yeah. So what do you do? We haven't talked a lot about the the six fifty five. So that's your single proc to you box. And I'm not as close to that one yet, although hopefully we can fix that soon. What does that bring you in terms of flexibility compared to the one you guy? Well, it, once again, it, it, it's got further uh, drive density. I believe that server supports 32 drives, 32 two and a half inch drive. Yeah, in a 2U. Yeah, in a 2U. And um, it'll, with, uh, with two to one oversubscription, you can do 32 NVMe drives and still have enough lanes uh, for high speed IO out of the box. Uh, the other thing it can do is it can support uh, six uh, T4 class GPUs mm-hmm. for say an inference engine uh, or a mix of both uh, T4s and drives if you wanted to do some kind of uh, edge uh, analytics storage device. We have customers that do those kinds of things with it. And at the same time, it can also support 20 uh, three and a half inch spindles. So if you wanted to do some kind of uh, storage node or surveillance node, sure, uh, 23 and a half inch spindles is, is a lot of storage. Well, sure. It's 16 terabytes a pop or whatever they are now. I mean, you can, right. <laughs> that's a pretty strong density statement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you bring up a good point on the PCIe uh, edge card uh, growth that you get in a 2U. You get more slots there. I know. So. We know, let's see, Kyoxia has announced uh, PCIe Gen 4. Samsung has. I believe the others are are relatively close by. I'm always reluctant to to say those things because I can't remember sometimes what, what I know publicly and what I know privately. But uh, um, I think that that's accurate. And we're excited about the performance storage that's capable here. But that's not the only story on, on Gen 4. Um, I had a call with Mellanox and they just shipped us, actually showed up a, a day or two ago, their Connect X6 card, which is uh-huh. PCIe Gen 4 compatible. When you guys think about the the what's available to you in Gen 4, storage one, IO is another, like, what do you guys get excited about? Or maybe what are your customers getting excited about? <clears throat> well, if you, if you remember at the launch, uh, one of our partners, Alot, who's a, a customer of ours out of Israel, um, they're they're very uh, happy with the AMD One socket because you know their uh, their appliance is really a network device that does uh, packet inspection, and so by having that many PCI lanes coupled to that many cores, uh, they can build a very dense, very high throughput uh, network device. So we talk about storage and we talk about GPUs, but there's this other part of the world that wants to do you know high speed networking nfb and those kinds of things and am you know the 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 architecture of the amd cpu and the system really lends itself to that yeah it's well you know it's pretty cool i know we're excited about the 635 we've got uh, some upcoming work to do on that system that's going to be uh, we think it's going to be really really neat to push the limits of the lanes of the cpu of of the IO. I mean, there's just so much potential. So we're going to 
be working on that over the next couple of weeks. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with next. And uh, thanks for taking the time to, to join us on the podcast today, Russ. Really oh, appreciate well, thank it. Thank you for the, for the opportunity. And uh, you're quite welcome.